Lord, it is night. Tonight is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is gone. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all who are dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Is Lisa there for second reading? There we are. The second reading point for this evening is from John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may clearly be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Hi, here's the opening word. It is from Frederick Buchner, and it's now and then from his memoir. Listen to your life. 
see it for the fathomless mystery it is, in the boredom and pain of it, no less than in the excitement and gladness. Touch, taste, smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it. Because in the last analysis, all moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. Turn around and believe that good news that we are loved is better than we ever dared hope. And that to believe in that good news, to live out of it and toward it, to be in love with that good news is all of glad things in this world, the gladdest thing of all. Yay, Anne. <laughs> okay, I'm so glad you, you read that. Okay. Two weeks ago, I awoke in the night with an epiphany. Some of my best thinking happens when I'm sleeping. I suddenly realized the date of this reflection, March the 14th, would be the 24th anniversary of my dad's death. He would be 105 today. I had been thinking about what I would say. It was slow going. I felt like I was heading nowhere. It seemed like a mystical sign that I should honor and remember dad. Then, like magic, a parade of seemingly random memories poured in. I'm four years old and waiting for dad to come home from the office. We have a daily routine. He beckons me with outstretched arms. I run towards him and climb up to his shoulders. He twirls me around dancing and singing. I could have danced all night. And here I have a photograph I want to show you of my dad and me. I'm four years old and there's my dad. Another memory. Saturday morning, it's time for my brother and me to jump into dad's red convertible and ride on top of the back seat. Not in the seat, but on the top of the back of it. Basically outside the car, waving our arms down Connecticut Avenue in Washington, DC. On the way, to Higgers Drugstore for our weekly portion of candy. One of the rules my mother established to curb our sweet tooth. Going with dad to the dirty water, my nickname for Glen Echo Amusement Park. Dad and I loved the roller coaster. The scarier, the better. My older brother was too afraid riding on it, although he never fessed up. It made me feel good that I was braver than he at something. My dad perched on the front bench at our club, proudly rooting for me during countless tennis matches and skating competitions. Riding in the car as he croons along with Frank Sinatra on the radio. Night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Seeing him weeping years later as I recite 
to often my wedding vows in a little church in Vermont. These memory snippets might sound like my dad was the ideal father, the ideal man, but that wasn't the case. He was flawed in many ways. He drank and gambled. He had a fling or two. His commitment to his work was sometimes half-hearted. As a child, I witnessed my parents growing increasingly apart and heard them from the stairwell arguing and yelling. They divorced when I was eight. When my dad died 40 years later, he was impoverished. My brother proclaimed him a bad father and a bad role model. Still, my dad was my first hero. He was like the guardian angel, Clarence, and it's a, it's a wonderful life. What caused such an imperfect person? <laughs> to have a, such a positive impact in my life. For one thing, he trans <clears throat> excuse me, he transferred his love for, for musicals and for music in general. Musicals became a lifelong passion and a lifeboat. I say lifeboat because there are many moments during my childhood and adolescent years when I would retreat to my room, put on a record and drift into a fantasy world. My troubles would melt under the influence of my fair lady. All I want is a room somewhere far away from the cold night air or Oklahoma. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Or uh, the king and I getting to know you, getting to know all about you. <laughs> okay, um, I think his true gift to me came from two of his defining attributes. One was his complete honesty and lack of pretension. Dad was guileless in matters of parent protocol and in his unedited way, sometimes told me things about himself he shouldn't have, such as the fact that Louise Alexander was the love of his life, not my mother. But he didn't cut himself any slack. He was brutally honest about his own shortcomings and failures. He was completely genuine and open-hearted in how he, he treated others. He made no distinctions based on a person's station in life or status. His friends included Washington bigwigs, the folks working at the local diner, and the guy who delivered his Chinese takeout. The other gift was the fact that he loved me unconditionally, not based on how I performed or what I achieved. His love and pride empowered me as a child to be me in a sea of often critical grown-up authorities and as an adult in a world where showing vulnerability is a sign of weakness. Maybe it's because of my father or maybe it's just the way I am I long for and appreciate relationships with real people who share the deepest parts of themselves, including the lovely and unlovely parts. It's not necessary or possible to be perfect, but it's beautiful and sacred to be real. 
who are your down to earth heroes? I'd like to hear about them sometime when we're all back in church once again. you to join in the lighting of a candle at your home as a way to set apart this time and place for prayer. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness <coughs> overcomes.
cares for ourselves and others. Loving God, in faithfulness we pray to you that you will rouse us from sleep and make us alert to anticipate the nearness of your presence. Sturdy God, may we follow closely in your lead. That this may be a season to discover your forgiveness freely given, your touch in every human embrace, and your love in every gesture of sacrifice between us. Generous God, redeem our anxieties and fears. Turn them into new hope in our hearts. That your grace may bring our hearts to fresh awareness of the pain in the world and make us see with uncovered eyes the Christ who suffers with his people in their troubles. See, me, God, give us eyes to see, see beyond the obvious that we may hold close all those in any kind of trouble, especially those we name now. Nicole, David and his family, Malcolm, Sean, Victor, Patrick and family, Tim, Amelia and Abigail, Karen and Charlie, Sarah, Bill, Elaine, Debbie, Abigail, Margaret, Jessica, Amelia, Deborah, Josh, Tracy, Priscilla, Robin and her family, Lana, Pete, Dan, David, Liz, Marjorie and Stacy, Mary Jill, Ted. Are there others? John, Deirdre, and Julie. Ann Hook and her family. May they know your healing, wholeness, confidence, and peace. Happy God, renew us as a people of service and compassion. May we recognize in our humble gatherings with prayer and thanksgiving that you are with us here to receive our songs of hope and gratitude. Thanksgivings can be added. We give thanks for Connor's continuing return to fullness and strength and for Norma's recovery. We give thanks for our discernment committee and pray for them and for the clergy who will present themselves for discernment with us as we seek our next rector. Are there others? Thanks for celebrating in the, in the church again. And in God, may we accept the gifts of your spirit. Receive those who have died into the arms of your love and comfort those who mourn them. You can add names if you'd like to. We pray for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Hooper and for comfort for her family and friends. Bob and his family. Jim, Eileen, and Noni. Welcome to God. With thanksgiving, we remember those who hurt and died. 
that you and your mercy will mend our brokenness and restore our relationship with you and our neighbor. Forgive me, God. Return us to the path of righteousness and guide our lives in this day and always. That the works of our lives may demonstrate your love. O oh, God, refresh from all people the will of good, the capacity for forgiveness, and the longing for peace. Receive our prayers, and in your grace, answer them as may, be, as may be best for us and for your people. God of compassion, you have called us to know you and to make you known. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and your peace. Amen. Please, everyone, unmute yourselves at home as we say our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Give us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O God, in love you created us and called us good. With open hearts, we thank you for your unfailing heart. With open hands, we offer our labors to mend ourselves and mend your world, to be your people and your healers of the breach. Bless and guide us now as our day turns toward evening. At your grace, may we share the love of forgiveness that we receive from you. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with and also with you. It's got a lot of peace signs going on here. <laughs> this is good. So first I want to apologize. I made a mistake. It's my first time officiating tonight, and, and I went right into the prayer without giving the uh, space for the for the opening word, which I overlooked in the program. But thankfully, we were able to hear from Anne a beautiful word from Frederick Speaker before the beautiful reflection by Peggy tonight. Mm. Thank you so much, Peggy. And uh, in your bulletin, you'll see there's a bunch of announcements. Not least being the sign up. Anyone else would feel comfortable to join us here in person? It's it's very it's very lovely to, uh, to be together again, and the amazing magic of being together on Zoom as well. So thank thank everyone for joining tonight, and also uh, another announcement uh, after the service tonight, we're going to have a, a group discussion. For anyone who's able to attend just another 15 minutes or so after the service, um, Peggy is going to um, introduce me <laughs> as the new coordinator. And we'll also have a chance just to thank Peggy for all of her work that she's been doing these last, I think it's seven years serving as the coordinator. Yeah. So uh, we are continuing on, and in, in, in no one is going anywhere. <laughs> Peggy's staying right here, but. Just uh, new new people brought into the mix, and we'll share a little bit of that story of just how the new life has been coming here. Uh, and then also a note: we just for anyone who would like to volunteer to set up, help with the setup, 
which involves turning on a few of the nice lights and lighting some candles and uh, having a little time right before the service. Please sign up online. Any more announcements before we sing our hymn of the closing? So now, come my way, my truth, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.